Hey everybody at Mission Control. Well, today we're going to start BR. Yeah. Reboot. Hey everybody. Well, today we're going to have our first video in the series of the build that uh, resulted in everything that you've seen on our videos so far. Uh, we're actually going to go back, uh, back in time, way back to when we actually did our very first experiment with aquaponics in our office. Uh, we just had an aquarium and we built a, a bed and we put it all together and we figured out how to do everything that resulted in uh, everything that you've seen again on uh, the Real Martian channel. So without further ado, let's go back in time. Doo -doo 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 -doo. You can see the colors are a little strange uh, for what I'm showing you and that's due to the LED light which is moving back and forth here on a motor system. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but that way, just wanted to tell you up front why it looks so weird. So anyway, um, what you're looking at here is our prototype aquaponics system. And aquaponics is the combination of hydroponics with aquaculture. You get those two words together and you get aquaponics. So you may know that hydroponics is growing things without dirt. So what you're looking at here is a grow bed that has a few vegetables in it, some broccoli and some other things that my wife has chosen that I don't really know the name of. And uh, they're growing with no dirt. The benefit of this is that you don't have any disease or rot. Um, you don't have to have a lot of land in order to grow. This can really help out with some of the world's food problems. And you get a lot better crop because you have really controlled capabilities such as your ammonia and pH and nitrogen levels or temperature levels. So, in order to make the grow beds work, you have to have fish. And it's no different than in normal agriculture where you have fertilizers. In this case, we're using little redhead minnows here they are back here as the fish do their thing that water is pumped up through the pump that you can see there in the screen it goes up and comes into the grow bed right here as the grow bed fills up with water eventually the water fills up to a certain level in which case a, a siphon valve here empties the entire grow bed and it goes back down in the fish tank as that water gets into the grow bed, bacteria grow that convert the ammonia that comes out of the fish gills and the nitrogen uh, out of the fish feces, converts it into usable forms that the plants can then utilize as fertilizer, as nutrients. It's a really nice closed loop system, uh, just the way that nature and God intended it to be. Again, this is just our prototype scale. We're going to be having a lot larger scale once we prove that we can do this. Um, it's not really new technology. People have been doing this for quite some time. Uh, the challenge with aquaponics, from my perspective, is uh, the capital cost to get it all going. So things like this LED light here are not inexpensive. This one's about $200. We have it moving back and forth on a motor system. This helps us keep the number of lights that we need down to a minimum and also replicates nature's um, sunset, sunrise cycle. You can see it going there. That was pretty cool going back. So one of the things that came out of that experiment is actually right here in front of us. This is the light rail, the light motor, that the exact same brand, the exact same type that were used as part of that experiment. Now it's production size. This is the same light that we used in the experiment, uh, and now we have brothers and sisters for it here as well. Another thing that came out of that experiment uh, was the automation unit. So here's the automation unit that controls this particular bed. So uh, this one uh, controls the light, the light motor, the sensors, the temperature humidity sensor, as well as the bed sensor. Uh, so we're standing here next to one of our grow beds. And again, everything here came from that experiment. The design evolved out of that experiment. So let's talk about that. First, when we did the experiment, we tried using the hydrostone um, hydroponics clay pebbles. And what we found is that they float. They're not supposed to, but they do a little bit. And what happens when you have 
have a, a bed, and we tried different bed types, like plastic was the one that we did in the experiment. The bed, as it fills with water, will expand. And as that expansion occurs, if the rock floats, the rock moves up. And then as the, as the water goes down, the bed collapses, and you get a pumping motion. And that pumping motion actually is kind of like a geological process on Earth or on Mars, where uh, stuff from the bottom of the bed was actually making its way up to the top because of this pumping motion. So two things that we learned there. One, the structure of your aquaponic system has to be very rigid so that the pumping effect doesn't occur. And two, don't use the hydrostone stuff uh, for your entire bed media. You can use it on just the top. And the reason you want to do that is so the roots can easily spread. What we've chosen to go with, we actually find it to be a better solution, is lava rock. Um, not pumice. So it doesn't float. This is lava rock. Uh, you can find it a pretty good deal. Uh, we got it from a supplier. I forget how many dollars per yard. Uh, but this is the best value. Gravel and all that stuff. Um, if you use gravel, you risk getting um, your pH off because it could be acid or alkaline. Uh, there could be some lime inside of the gravel. So you have to be careful with that. But this lava rock is really good stuff. So we chose to go with lava rock. And again, everything here. Uh, came out of that experiment, including the bell siphon. So the bell siphon was a key piece of how we were going to drain the bed, and we still use that. Uh, no moving parts. It's completely passive, meaning it doesn't use any electricity. Nobody has to be here pumping it or anything like that. It just does it on its own. Uh, so that was one of the things we took from that experiment as well. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's everything we got. Of course, the bottom, instead of an aquarium, uh, underneath each bed is the fish tank. So, uh, just like we did in the experiment where the aquarium was below and the bed was above, that's so the water uh, can just run down. Uh, we do have the pump, so let's go talk about the pump. So here we are at Yield Pumping Station, and just like in the experiment, we had an aquarium pump that takes water from the fish tank and then distributes it throughout the entire system. Uh, just like in the experiment, we have um, a jet that's inside of the tank made from this pump that actually creates a current inside of the fish tank so that the fish can swim against the current and get some exercise. It keeps them a lot healthier, makes for a better meat. Uh, and then this pump also distributes uh, the water to each of the grow beds through the PEX piping that we've put in place. So all of this, we learned all of this from just doing that simple uh, office experiment. So there we are. Uh, we've gone from an experiment inside of the office to everything that's out here and it's actually quite amazing how much you can learn from doing small scale experiments like that and one of the things I have come to appreciate about aquaponics is that it really does scale very very well and, and principles that you learn at the small level like what we did in the office uh, totally apply to the big level as well. Uh, including evaporation, I might add. That was a problem we had in the office, and we have that same challenge out here. That's why we have a dehumidifier. So uh, lots of learning that went into this experiment, and it's been pretty cool to see it all go from that experiment into this full-scale uh, system that you've seen here today. So, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, we've got a lot more videos going back in time, uh, looking at some pictures and, and seeing how we put all this stuff together. I look forward to sharing all those with you. I really appreciate all the constructive feedback. I hope that this stuff is inspirational and helping give you guys ideas uh, and showing you how we've done things. And, and, of course, our mistakes will help you not make those mistakes. So I'm plenty happy to share those as well so that you can be successful in your journey. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you like to support us. This is a real Martian. God bless you. Take care.